All right, everyone, welcome to another initial DIY mods video and the first full initial DIY mods review video. So today we're gonna be focusing on the Lotus Plasma Cutter. Now, I bought this off Amazon. They haven't paid me or anything like that, so this is a completely independent review. So a couple of things to keep in mind with this. This is a budget unit. It's basically the cheapest plasma cutter you can buy that also has plasma arc, uh, plas or sorry, that also has a pilot light. The main thing with the pilot light, basically you pull the trigger and it initiates a spark and it allows you to keep a set distance. You don't need to actually touch to start your cutting arc. It's super handy, especially getting in tight spots, cutting things that have uh, gaps in them, something like expanded metal grate, where you've got gaps instead of having to touch start each arc you can just simply cut all the way across and the arc will adjust to make your cut. This goes from, uh, I believe, the complete sever cut of three quarters inch, which is pretty big, especially for a home DIY guy like myself, uh, but it also does cut cleanly through quarter inch and even up to half inch, uh, so the spec says. I haven't cut something specifically at a half inch to test that though, um, so I can't really test to that, but everything beneath that was relatively clean as far as plasma cutters go. There are a couple of things to keep in mind. I did read the spec manual and something that I wanna to address to the actual manufacturers of this itself. Can you please update the spec sheet so that you actually have different cut rates and what the minimum voltage or minimum amperage requirement is for cutting different materials or for cutting different thicknesses. At the moment, it basically just says if you wanna cut quarter inch, half inch, or three quarter inch, you just turn it all the way up to max amp, which is 50 amps on this machine. You can see here on the panel, Basically, you're cutting all the way up to 50 amps. That doesn't really tell you what a clean cut is gonna be um, and how you can use maybe less amperage. For example, if your breaker keeps triggering like mine, it's really cold in the shop, especially. Today's a warm day, it's about 50 degrees, but uh, trying to work here in the garage and it's 20 degrees inside or 30 degrees inside, I wanna be able to have the heater on, uh, even if the heater's on low or maybe this floodlight or something like that so I can see. Uh, and be able to adjust this to just what I need rather than all of the energy all at once. So that's my comment, my feedback there for something that they wanna change. A couple of things that you need to run something like this. Like I said, it is relatively cheap. It comes with mostly everything you need as far as the unit. It comes with a regulator. Um, keep in mind that if you don't have 240 volt uh, outlets, like me in the shop here, I only have 120, you need to make sure you get the power converting cable uh, that actually, it's not a power converting cable, it's the socket converting cable to go from their pronged plug for a 240 volt that goes to the 120 volt so you can plug it into a regular outlet. It does not come with that cable, so you do have to purchase that separately, but on amazon.com it's relatively easy. It's one of the suggested other items that they recommend. It does come with a few sets of consumables, which is good. It comes with, uh, I believe, two sets, which doesn't leave you with a lot of spares. However, that does, uh, that does get you started, which is good. Another thing that you're gonna need, you're gonna need safety equipment. So always safety first. You really don't wanna burn yourself or shock yourself with this because it, it can be pretty bad or even fatal. Some things that you're gonna need, minimum a set of heavy duty gloves for when you're cutting something really thick. Light duty is gonna help, but keep in mind that certain materials like neoprene may not be best when they burn. They may melt and they may actually leave uh, some pretty bad burns. So keep that in mind. Another thing you're gonna want is a hood. Now technically, you need glasses that are about shade five. Now I don't have a particularly pretty face, but I still want to protect it. That's where the hood comes in. Now this hood is the same one that I use for welding. It has adjustable darkness, which is good. The arc from this is bright, but it's not as bright as a TIG welding or MIG welding arc. So you want something that has variable adjustment. Now I got this for right around 50 to 60 bucks at Harbor Freight. And the last one that I had, I also got for about 50, 60 bucks at Harbor Freight about five years ago. So they do last a good amount of time, but you do need to make sure you get a good one or have one that's always gonna be dark. If you're working in tight spaces, that's pretty hard to see and uh, you don't wanna cut the wrong thing under a car. So uh, this one, it's got from Grind, which is basically just a, heat, uh, just a face shield. And then from there, I turn it to nine when I do my plasma arc cutting. And then I go all the way up to 12 when I do my MIG or my TIG welding. So that gives me the best protection, but still lets me see what's going on. You also have adjustment settings inside. So again, this isn't a review on the helmet, but it's definitely something that you wanna to get to, uh, to be able to protect yourself. When you start cutting, especially something thick, your uh, spatter will actually shoot back at you. And if you go too quickly, it'll also shoot back at you. So that's something you wanna keep in mind when you're using a plasma cutter. That's why I recommend the face shield rather than just the glasses. So another good thing is that it does have, it's not a built-in regulator, but it does come with the set. 
So this regulator, it seems to be pretty decent as far as regulating. Uh, it doesn't seem to change a huge significant amount with pressure drops. Definitely wanna make sure you have clean, dry air going to the machine. If you don't, you end up basically burning through consumables a lot. So it's nice to make sure you have a good filter set up. Another thing that I don't like about this machine is that the fittings, they use basically hose clamps, uh, similar to automotive, but the, uh, the fittings don't seem to seal too well on the brass barbs that they have. Uh, perhaps going from the filter to the machine, you can use the, the barbs, but basically going to your compressor, it'd be better if you, they included a sort of quick disconnect or something, because I didn't have time to run to the shop and actually buy something. I'm currently set up with a hose clamp coming off of my actuator, and if I want to get gas, I just put a zip tie around the front, and it compresses everything and allows it to run. Not the cleanest setup, not the best setup. I'd like to just have a direct feed into it, but again, the fittings didn't come with it, and I didn't have any spares on hand without taking apart my impact or something else. I guess lesson learned, have some spare uh, quick connect fittings. Another thing to run or to need or required when you have a plasma cutter is going to be your compressor. You want to make sure you have a good compressor. Uh, in this case, my compressor is ungodly loud and I hate it. I close the garage when I use it because I don't want to annoy my neighbors too much. However, uh, you got to run it, you got to run it. So normally I'll charge it up, I'll do some cuts, charge it up. The compressor I have, it's a 20 gallon 1.5 horsepower Craftsman compressor. The main issues with it is it's 5.1 CFM at 40 PSI, which is adequate for the machine. What it, that means though is that the compressor is constantly kicking on and running when you're doing longer cuts. If you have a larger compressor, that's obviously good. But again, the plasma cutter, you cannot run it without a compressor of some kind that's capable of flowing what you need for this machine. And the specs that are listed on the website, so you do know the minimum requirements. So don't go out and buy a plasma cutter and not have your appropriate air supply because you won't be able to use it and that's gonna be a bummer. All right, so we're gonna cut a few different ways here using our machine. So what we're gonna first do is uh, we're gonna cut, we're gonna make a bracket, a radiator core support bracket for the uh, 4G63 Mini Cooper. So the first thing we need is cut some angled stock. This is eighth inch. Not because this needs to be the strength of eighth inch, but just because I have eighth inch laying around, so it's gonna be really easy to, to work with in this case. So first thing we're gonna do, we are gonna make sure that we have air going, getting supplied to our machine. And until I get a ball valve and quick connect fitting, um, this is basically how I'm gonna do it, but eventually I wanna just get a nice uh, ball valve with a good seal, and then a quick connect fitting so I can just hook up to the valve and then turn it on, super simple. All right, so it is on. There's a very, very slight leak, um, but it doesn't really affect our air pressure. We're gonna check our regulator. The regulator has a click lock, which is pretty nice. It means you can't really bump it. So you pop it up, adjust it to where you want. The manual recommends between 50 and 60 PSI. <coughs> We're hooked up <coughs> on our back, so now we can just turn it on. It does have uh, an overheating, so basically if this thing overheats, it will shut itself off. Um, you leave it, you leave the machine on, it won't, basically won't start an arc, but the fans will keep going so it'll cool itself off. Uh, we got our pilot arc hooked up, we got our trigger hooked up, we have our positive, I'm sorry, we have our negative, which is our, our gun, this cuts on the negative arc, and then our positive acts as a ground in this case, basically we clamp it to the piece like you would on a welder, so we got it clamped on here, and uh, got our gear, so kick it on. There it goes. Now I don't recommend cutting on a workbench if you have anything underneath it. I've got like an old lawnmower and some tarp and other stuff under there so I don't want to cut on the bench. It does shoot a lot of sparks. Um, I'll probably shoot it horizontally here in the beginning but you'll see how big that arc shoots and uh, obviously I don't want to burn my bumper, at least not where it can't be fixed. So let's get our gear on. Like I said, it does shoot quite a bit of sparks. Currently we have it set for max amperage. So pilot arc, uh, basically when I pull this trigger, air is gonna come through the handle and blow out the spark to uh, basically stick out ahead of that point. We're gonna basically just drag this along and it's gonna cut, and we're gonna drag it along, it's gonna cut. Now because we're cutting the angle this way, uh, we will need, we can't really reach here in the corner, so we'll cut it from the outside. Make sure your helmet is on. Mine isn't. 
I'm putting at the lowest setting, which is 9. <clears throat> Arc. My hand is not particularly steady, and I burnt the sh** out of the ground. So that is something to keep in mind. And now if we cut horizontally, you'll see how much spark I'm talking about here. particularly steady hand, but let's take a look at what we've done here. All right, so I'm no plasma cutting expert. I was trying to keep it on a straight line, but I'm sort of wandering and wobbling and moving around a bit. But you can see here, the cut is somewhat jagged in here where I'm sort of moving around quite a bit. Um, you got some slag here, but that chips off pretty easily with like a hammer or a flat head and a, and a mallet or something. So you can chip off the main pieces, and then uh, of course you can grind it down. So we've got our piece marked here. We're going to use this as our ground, and that's just going to let us do our cut elevated. And to try and not burn the concrete so that the apartment doesn't get super mad at me, let's just put a little bit of ow, put a little bit of scrap down there to try and keep the sparks from etching their way through the concrete. And uh, let's give it another cut. I'm going to turn down the amperage to 30 amps and see if we can still get a cleanish cut. Let's see what we can do. Alright, so you can see how crooked that is. Again, that's just my skill being zero. But we're going to go ahead, we can chip that stuff off. Like I said, pretty easily. Just grab it with some pliers and see. Similar to like spatter on a welder, you get sort of that same effect. And that's just the pliers basically taking that off. Uh, you can see the cut face here. And you can see it's really not that bad. Um, even though it's, I've turned the, the uh, amperage down significantly, I'm only using 120 volt uh, power supply. So it, it definitely turned out quite good and, and quite usable. Here's the other piece, still a bit warm. It's the same thickness of material, but this one hasn't been cleaned up yet. You can see how unsteady my line is. Uh, I'm just not braced well, so I'm kind of meandering all over this cut. Again, this is a radiator core support rack. It doesn't need to be pretty, doesn't need to be symmetric, it just needs to support the top of the core to keep it spaced properly in front of the engine. You can see the parts where I kept it somewhat straight, or on this piece, that did cut pretty well, even with lower amperage. Maybe the lower amperage is actually better because instead of producing such a large arc, this one's a pretty good example. It took half a second to clean up with, with uh, pliers, uh, flat disc, or any rotary tool, whatever. Um, you can clean that up within seconds. And uh, I definitely recommend chipping it off before you try to file it down. Otherwise, you're going to have to file through the slag instead of knocking the slag off immediately. All right, so here's something else that I cut. And basically what it is is a sway bar. This Mini Cooper, I'm converting it to all-wheel drive. And it turned out that the, uh, the bracket mount got in the way of the sway bar link. So I had to remove it. But in order to remove it, you have to drop the gas tank and the subframe. And it's probably like a five hour to 10 hour job, depending on how stubborn some bolts can be. So because I need to relocate it and not remount it, I decided to actually just cut it off. And that made it a lot easier. It took me about 30 seconds rather than five hours. Now I am planning to either re-weld this or just buy an aftermarket one uh, for the rear. 
and make it a rear setup. But this kind of shows a little bit of what your thickness is. This is about, probably about 5 eighths inch, maybe slightly larger. And this would definitely be a, like a sever cut type, uh, type situation. So not super clean. Also my first time in cutting something round and awkward and closer to a fuel tank. And that's where I started and kind of missed and then restarted over here. So, all right, so as you can see, the plasma cutter does work very well for home and hobby use. It did cut through something that's about five eighths inch in diameter. Uh, and it seems to cut easily through eighth inch steel. Of course, my skill not being called into question uh, as shaky at best. Uh, but it is a great tool to have in the shop. One thing that I do like it is it's extremely light. So it is something that is quite portable. It's easy to move around. And of course, as you see, we don't have a lot of space in the shop. Got two welders, now a plasma cutter. We've got bandsaw, grinders, drill press, chop saw, uh, rotisserie sanders. We've got three different uh, argon tanks, argon CO2 mixes. We've got the compressor. We've got the welding bench and uh, general uh, bench. Big uh, roller toolbox. We've also got tire storage, part storage, wheel storage, more part storage. Two cars in the garage, two cars outside the garage. Um, swaps and chassis being moved around all the time. So we really don't have space to have some big clunky thing. So it is definitely good to have something like this that's easy to move around, easy to use, and quite versatile. All right, so this is the Lotus LTP 5000 plasma cutter. Uh, this is the instruction manual. It's pretty small, and like I said, uh, I would like for them to change that uh, cutting spec. Setup is super quick. It takes about 20 minutes um, if you need to move stuff around the shop. Uh, other than that, it's super quick and easy. The nozzle already comes pre-assembled, so that makes it super quick too. Yes, here we go. So this is the chart where it basically says the current in amps and the thickness of the material, uh, or the thickness that you're cutting, and then also the material. So that is that right there. But again, I'd recommend uh, them updating what the minimum amperage should be to make a clean cut when, when cutting material or when, even when listing things here. So that's my recommendation for them. Again, that's the LTP 5000D plasma cutter from Lotos. Yeah, not Lotus, Lotos. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to not only get access to more reviews, but access to DIYs like what we're doing with the all wheel drive Mini Cooper. Uh, of course, we've got Genesis Coupe videos, turbo videos, uh, drifting videos, racing videos. We've got pretty much everything that a DIY person would love. So once again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment if you have any uh, <coughs> Uh, be sure to comment if you have any questions. If you want to see how this is doing, I'll definitely post an update about six months down the road to see how it is. Check it out if you guys want a plasma cutter. I know Black Friday and Cyber Monday have kind of already passed us, but uh, again, there's a lot of deals on Amazon that are uh, almost too good to pass up, and, and this happens to be one of them. So make sure to give it a look if you know somebody that wants to get a shop built or is uh, in need of new tools. That's one that, that really does work really well. We'll be having more reviews as well coming to the channel. Um, I definitely have quite a few other machines that I'd like to do reviews on, uh, comments, perhaps feedback for those that are actually building it or creating it. So that way they can improve their processes. I can give you guys honest feedback that's impartial and unbiased. And of course, looking at things on a more technical side. Back to work. <laughs>